who yet, for God's sake, go not to these wars. The time was, Father, that you broke your word when you were more endeared to it than now. When your own Percy, when my heart's dear Harry, through many a northward look to see his father bring up his powers, but he did long in vain. Who then persuaded you to stay at home? There were two honors lost, yours and your son's. For yours the God of heaven brighten it. For his, it stuck upon him as the sun in the grey vault of heaven, and by his light did all the chivalry of England move to do brave acts. He was, indeed, the glass wherein the noble youth did dress themselves. He had no legs that practised not his gait, and speaking thick, which nature made his blemish, became the accents of the valiant, for those that could speak low and tardily would turn their own perfection to abuse, to seem like him, so that in speech, in gait, in diet, in affections of delight, in military rule, humours of blood, he was the mark and glass, copy and book that fashioned others. And him, O oh wondrous him, O oh miracle of men, him did you leave, second to none, unseconded by you, to look upon the hideous god of war in disadvantage to abide a field where nothing but the sound of Hotspur's name did seem defensible. So you left him. Never, oh, never do his ghost the wrong to turn your honour more precise and nice with others than with him. Let them alone. The marshal and the archbishop are strong. Had my sweet Harry but half their numbers, today might I, hanging on Hotspur's neck, have talked of Monmouth's grave. <laughs>